Okay, so, so we're looking at binary BCH codes. Okay, so there are quite a few things I want to emphasize which, uh, which I think uh, might have been missed out. Let me, uh, let me go through this in some detail now. Okay. So essentially if you, if you want uh, length n, Okay, you have to begin with an element beta in some extension field such that the order of beta is z1 equal to n. Okay. So this is how you have to start constructing a binary BCH code. And why does such a beta exist? It, it always exists. It's easy to see why it has to be so. Okay, so once once you, once you agree on that things are fine and then you can construct the parity check matrix. Yes, parity check matrix. Okay, so of course you want dn equals let's say greater than equal to d, then you have to do one beta beta square all the way to beta part and minus one and then the second row you put beta square square beta square oh I'm sorry just, just beta square and you have beta square square all the way to beta square raised to the power and minus 1. So now this you proceed all the way down to beta power b minus 1. Right? So that's our, that's our construction method. And we showed why this satisfies both the properties you want. For satisfies property and n quite trivially. It also looks at, gives you a minimum distance at least d. Okay. So one thing that this construction does not give a direct handle on is the dimension. Okay. To find the dimension, you have to do some more work. Okay. So the best way to think of the dimension is using this generator matrix, generator polynomial, g of x. Okay. What? It's the LCM of all these minimal polynomials. Okay. So this is. Okay, and then we know that n minus k is going to be equal to what? Degree of g of x, right? So that's the handle you get on the dimension. So you don't compute the dimension directly. You have to you have to find the LCM of the minimal polynomial. But then we saw that beta and beta square will have the same minimal polynomial. So only the odd powers here have some hope of producing distinct. Uh, distinct uh, polynomial. So, so it's very common to take this d minus 1, d to be equal to 2t plus 1. Okay, so the minimum distance, the design distance. Okay, so this d is called the design distance. So the reason why it's not exactly equal to the minimum distance is the minimum distance is greater than or equal to d. You can't be sure whether it will be equal to d or not. To say that it's equal to d, you have to actually produce a weight d code work. In most cases it will be true, but we don't know that ahead of time. Okay, so it's very common to take the design distance to be 2t plus 1 and this t is called the design well, error correcting capability. Okay, that makes sense, right? So if you have small d as the minimum distance that is guaranteed and clearly t equals t minus 1 by 2 can be errors can be corrected. Okay, so that's your uh, design error correcting capability. Okay, like I said, you you will get a minimum down on the minimum distance, and then you get an expression for the dimension. Okay, so it's not very clear how you can quickly bound it, but then you know that since since uh, so so remember this has d minus one terms, so d minus one by two of them can give you non-trivial different minimal polynomials, right? So what is d minus one by two? That is small t. Okay, so out of these d minus one guys, this is actually two t. T of them are guaranteed to give you distinct minimal polynomials. And assuming the worst case that the T of them give you a degree M minimal polynomial, you can get a bound on the Q. Okay, so you can see the degree of G of X is at least as large as oh no, smaller than or equal to oh, bigger than or equal to smaller than or equal to oh, sorry. Smaller than or equal to m times t. Okay, so that's the main result that I was driving at. 
Okay, so that's clear, right? Why? There are two t terms here, and only the odd number, odd power terms have some hope of giving you distinct minimal power number. Okay, the even power one clearly will be the same as or the the that by two the odd 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 term, right? So because you have the I mean, you, you have characteristic two here, right? So you can't get more than that. So that many of them will give you different ones, and the degree can be less than or equal to mg. So this is usually a tight bound. Okay, so a small t, this is tight. So what do I mean by saying this is tight? Actual equality is satisfied. So usually, okay. So but one has some. There are some exact calculations you can do here, but usually for small t, this is tight. Okay. So using this, you get a bound that k is greater than or equal to minus n. So this is usually true, and like I said, for small t, this is also fine. Okay. So that's a useful, useful notion to have, and we saw some examples. Okay, and we were able to compute the smallest t for which this bound can be violated. Okay, so we had a way of computing that, right? Okay, so I showed you an example, and I showed you how for this, what, what, for what t will this bound be violated? Up to some t, it will be satisfied, except for some t, it will be violated, and there's a way to compute it, and so you can do that, right? Okay, so so remember there is a there is a statement here that I'm going to make which which I think is, is, is very important. You have to pay attention to the statement. I think there was some confusion about this statement even before. How do I define my binary BCS code? It's basically, set of all code words in uh, let's say G of two M emphasize the operation dot. That what? That times the transpose is zero. Okay, so this is my constraint. Okay, and I said to compute the dimension of the rank of H and related to the dimension, you cannot think of the rank of H in in G of two par m, right? So if you think of the rank of H in G of two par m, you will get misleading answers because you are forcing C to be binary, right? On the other hand, I can also define a code over G of two par m with H as the parity check matrix. Okay, so look at this other code. Another code can be defined as let's say C in G of two par m and such that H times C transpose is zero. Okay, so these two codes are very very different. Okay, so clearly this code is contained in this code, right? Is this correct? Right. This code is contained in this code. But for this another code, what is the dimension? How do you find the dimension? What is the dimension? Do I have to do minimal polynomials and all that for this code? No. How do I find the dimension? N minus rank of x. Right. Is that clear? And how do you compute this rank of x? How can I compute this rank of H? You can do Poisson elimination. Is that right? Okay. Right. So I've been making this statement about how, for binary BCH codes, this condition is redundant. Okay. For binary BCH code, this condition is redundant. Okay. Right. Why is that condition redundant for binary BCH codes? If any code word satisfies the first condition, it will also automatically satisfy the second condition. There is no need to have enforce that condition again. Can I say that the second row and the first row are linearly dependent? They are not linearly dependent. Okay, so don't. I think I saw a lot of people made this statement particularly in the first place. Okay, the second row and the first row are not linearly dependent at all. They cannot be linearly dependent. It's very different constraints. Okay, but if you force the binary BCH code on it, okay. The second, the condition implied by the second row is redundant. Okay, so that's what that's the only statement I can make. I cannot say the second row is the is some scaled version of the first row. Okay, it be a scaled version of the first row. Doing beta square. Okay, okay. Right. There's no there's no way one beta one beta square one beta square can never be a scaled version of one beta. Right. So in any in any field it's not possible. Okay. So keep that in mind. The second row is not linearly dependent on the first row. Okay. On the other hand, if I replace each entry of this matrix by The m bit column vector. Okay, suppose I do. Suppose I do that. So replace each entry of this matrix by an m bit column vector. The first row will give me m 
rows. The second row will give me m other rows. Once I do that, I can say what? What can I say? Once I do that, I can make some statement about linear dependence. In that binary matrix, binary equivalent matrix, the second set of m rows will be linearly dependent on the first set of m rows. Okay, so that statement is fine. There's nothing wrong with that statement. Okay, but if you if you look at these two rows as elements of GF two bar m, then there's no way these two are linearly dependent. That will not happen. Once you replace it with m bit vec column vectors, it has to turn out that the second set of m rows have to be linearly dependent on the first set of m. Now because now we are in a binary world. Okay, we are looking at GF two, right? Everything is in GF two. Okay, and that has to work out. So that's why the second second condition is there. Okay, so there's a subtle distinction here. Think about it if if you want. So confused by it, take some simple examples and work it out. Or GF sixteen or something, you'll see that. Of course, over GF sixteen they are linearly independent, but if you replace it with the four bit equivalent column wise, you'll see that the second set of four rows become totally linearly dependent on the first set of four. Okay, so that that's something important to think about. Convince yourself about that. Okay, so do you have any other questions on this construction? Okay, so this point is a little bit, little bit subtle here. Why we are restricting here to binary, the binary uh, constraint here. Here we don't have a binary constraint. Okay, so we'll come back and look at this another code. So this another code has another name. It's called the Reed Solomon code. It's also a very, very popular code. Okay, so the Reed Solomon code is also very much used in practice. Okay, we'll come back and look at this soon enough, okay, and you'll see the computations in the Reed Solomon code are much, much simpler than the computation in the BCH code. But we'll begin with the binary BCH code. It's also useful in practice. So many, many systems use binary BCH code. There are some advantages to binary BCH code. So finally, we'll compare these two and see what the advantages and disadvantages are later. Okay, so we'll begin with the binary BCH code. Any question? Things are fine. Are you comfortable? Okay, so let's do another computation just to drive home the point here. So let's take an example. Uh, let me take n to be two thousand thirty-seven. So there's a reason why I picked 2047. Why, why have I picked 2047? So what? It's two power. 11 minus one. Is it okay? So maybe it's, this is not such a great example. So let's pick some other number. Let's pick 4095. Okay, so that's a better example. So I have picked 4095 again. Right? Power minus one. Oh my goodness! So you should know the powers of two till some sixty-four thousand or something. What's 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 two plus sixteen? I'm sorry, six five five three six. So it's that not, up to that, you should know the powers of two. Okay. So it's important. Please check. Mm -hmm. uh, several communication contexts show up again and again and again. Okay, so let's say forty ninety-six is an easy enough number to remember. Okay, so it's two plus twelve minus one. Is that okay? Right. So, so what I want to do is to construct BCH codes. Okay. So, of course, you don't have to exactly compute any, uh, any minimal polynomial, but let's just try to find out for t equals one, which gives you d equals three. You can quickly conclude k will be what? Answer. I'm sorry. Four zero eight three, right? Four zero eight three. Is that okay? How did I get four zero eight three? Degree of GFX is going to be twelve, right? Is there some confusion here? So first of all, I should pick a beta. So let's say we pick beta belonging to GF two plus twelve primitive. Okay, so that's that's the ni nicest thing we can pick, right? Why can I pick that? What's the order of beta now? 4095, which is what I want. So the reason why I picked 4095 is it's a very nice number. We can just go to 4096 and then pick up the beta in this primitive. And then what will be the minimal polynomial of beta? I don't know that, but what will be the degree of the minimal polynomial of beta? It will be 12, right? So most likely, like I said, it's, it's going to be 12 most of the time. Okay, so to go really down before it will not be 12. Okay, so the next case is to pick d equals 2 and d equals 5. 
And then the once again, the key is not the exact minimum distance of the code we are designing. We don't know that ahead of time. We only know that it's a bound. Okay. So usually it will be a tight bound, but you have to be you have to be careful with the statement you make. Unless you show an explicit code word at that way, you are not proved the minimum distance is that. Okay, so what is this? What is this? Okay. So remember the rule roughly k is n minus mp. Okay, so m is what? M is 12, right? Okay, so that's the main thing. So once you just do that, you can just keep subtracting 12. Okay, so it's a very easy thing to do. What do you get here? 40, 71. So what about like 40 equals 10? Okay, so here it might be a little bit scared, but believe me, it will hold till 10. Let's just say. Okay, so what will be here? Forty ninety five minus hundred and twenty. What is that? Three nine seven five. Okay. So let's pause at this point and see if we have achieved something which sounds very non-trivial. So I know a code now which has n equals forty ninety five and k equals three thousand nine hundred and seventy five. So what does it mean? I can give you two power three thousand nine hundred and seventy five code words. In what? In zero one four zero nine five. Okay. So you take the set of all possible forty ninety five length binary vectors. Okay. So let's see. Putting this mouse and stop. Okay. Good. So you you now. You are able to come up with 2,000 two power. Okay, so I think it needs some action. Actually, you can We'll ignore the noise as we ignore everything else in this great country of us. Okay, so let's say so two power three nine seven five. Okay, how big a number is that? Let's say. Or who can tell me how many digits it will have if I put one three zero zero zero? Roughly. Sorry. You know how to compute that? Do you know how to compute how many digits this will have? How do you compute that? Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, roughly you can do it. So basically, you take log ten, right? So you take log ten of this. So what do you need for log ten? You need log ten of two. What's log ten of two? Point three zero one zero. So point three zero one zero times three nine seven five. So how many? How many bits is that? So it's, it's very big. It's going to be like more than thousand three hundred. Okay. So yes. And so 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 huge number of code words we can produce in this. Zero one four zero nine six. Okay, but anybody can produce those code words. So what is so special about these code words? Okay, anybody can come up with the list of two or three nine seven five. It's not so hard. You just produce some basic elements, you'll get it. But what is so special about these two or three nine seven five code words that we're producing? Yeah, any two of them will differ in at least twenty one places, and I can guarantee that. Okay, so that's something quite non-trivial. Okay, so at the beginning, you may not have. If I told you you can do this, you may not have believed. Okay, so it's very hard to come up with code words that are always so much distance apart. But here it is. I can do it. I can produce two power three nine seven five code words, binary code words. Any two of them are at least twenty one bits apart. Then they differ in twenty one places. Okay, so it's quite a non-trivial feat that we have accomplished. Okay, so in terms of this, not only that, I have a very very simple description for each of my code words. Okay, so it's not that I'm saying this is a very complex description. You run some computer algorithm for like three days and come up with this thing. So no, I'm not saying anything like that. What am I giving? I'm giving a very precise and simple computation for the code word. Okay, so how do I describe the code word? I have to simply produce this g of x. Okay, and what will be the degree of g of x? 120. Right. So you take any polynomial of degree. Less than or equal to three nine seven four with binary coefficients, and then multiply it with this specific one twenty degree one twenty polynomial I'm giving you. You will get the code. Okay. 
So what can I do very easily? I can do encoding very easily. Okay, so if I have to do encoding, all I have to do is take this 120 degree generator polynomial and multiply it with whatever message polynomial that's coming out. Okay, so you think of these things in polynomials, I can do encoding very easily. Okay? So not only I'm giving you a guaranteed minimum distance in the construction, I'm giving you a very simple encoding procedure. Okay, and this is very important in practice. Okay, so if you don't have a simple encoding procedure, nothing is going to work. Okay, so you have a very simple encoding procedure in for, for addressing this two part three nine seven five code words. Okay, so it's quite a non trivial uh, phenomenon that you have up. Okay. So you can do this for any other n. Okay. So for instance, if you want to pick six five three three five at three five five three five five, okay, which is two power sixteen minus one. Then you take a primitive element and g of two power sixteen, and you can just repeat the same calculation. You get all these numbers. In fact, if I'm not wrong, one such code is used in the this uh, digital video broadcast satellite standards. Okay. So they use these things uh, every day, so, so to speak. Okay. So, so that's the that's that's something which is which I want to convey. There's something magical about this construction. Okay, so it's a very simple construction, and it gives you fantastic results in terms of what what is possible. Okay, so it gives you a handle on going to very very large block length without any great difficulty. Okay, so that's something that's important. We'll we'll come back and address these issues later. Okay, is this okay? This is clear, right? Okay. So let me talk briefly about the encoder. So this is quite important. So like I said, if you have an n k equal equal to b equals to p plus one uh, binary b c h code, okay. So remember, whenever I say d equals to b plus one in the context of binary b c h code, you have to understand that this is the design distance. Okay. All right. So let's say, suppose g of x is the generator polynomial, and what would be its degree? Degree would be equal to n minus k. I know that for sure, right? So it will be n minus k. Okay. So, so every code word. Okay. So what is this code? I know this code has a simple description. Every code word is basically. Okay. So every code word can be described as m of x times g of x. Okay, so this is one of our interesting result to remember. Okay, so this is a code word. This is the generator polynomial, and this is a message polynomial. And how do I construct this message polynomial? Okay, so it's going to be m zero plus m one x plus so on to m k minus one x power. K minus one, and each of these m is a binary. Okay, so I can take two par k message polynomials in this fashion, multiply each of them with the generator polynomial, and I will get a code. Okay, so this is a very valid encoding. So you might just do that. Okay, so if I have a message m, which is k bits, how do I produce a code word? Simply do m of x times g of x. And you produce a code word C with M X. Okay, right. So this is a perfectly fine encoding. But what is one possible problem with this encoding? Is there any disadvantage with this encoding? Any reason why you may not like this in practice, etc., etc.? Anything that you notice? Sorry, it's not that expensive computation. Right? So roughly you're doing uh, n minus k. So, so I mean, so for every bit that you're producing of the code word, you're doing, you're doing something like n minus k operation. So that's, that's you can't expect for anything less than that. So it's, it's not bad. Okay. So the one problem with this is it's not systematic. Okay. So that is a that is a, a crucial defect with this problem. Okay. So with this encoder, the the reason why this encoder is considered not so good is because of because of this non-systematic character. What do I mean by non-systematic? It's not true that the message appears by itself in the code word. Okay, so that's an advantage. Why is systematic? Uh, 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 that's that's an advantage that's important in practice. Having a systematic encoder. Why is a systematic encoder nice? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So when when on the decoder side, you can directly take the message out. So once you do the decoding, the message is already available. You don't have to do a division by 
uh, g of x or something. And again, on the encoder side, you have to do multiplications for k bits. Okay, so you only have to do multiplications for the remaining n minus k parity. Okay, so which is better, right? So, so maybe there's also a computation saving that. But also more import importantly, typically what happens is, so there might be some other conditions that are satisfied by your message. Okay, there might be some other reasons why you might want your message to be in a certain form. And you don't want some encoder to change all the characteristics of the message. When you do multiply the GFX, several characteristics of the message might change and I may not like it in practice. I might want the characteristics I have in my message, like for instance random positioning of ones or some other, whatever characteristics I put into my message to be retained by the encoder. I may not want it to violate. It can violate it for a small number of parities, that's what I live up with that. I live with that, but not for my message. Okay, so there might be some reasons for that. So maybe you want something like that to be satisfied. So if, if that's needed, then also systematic encoding is very nice. Okay, so we like a systematic encoding. So what I'm going to talk about now is how to do systematic encoding for BCH code. It turns out that's also very easy. Okay, it's a little bit little bit trickier than this one, but it's also very easy. Okay, so you won't map m of x to m of x times g of x. You will map m of x to some other multiple of g of x so that m shows by itself in the decode. Okay, so this is how you do it. It's, it's quite easy. It's not very hard. So here's the systematic encoder. So what you have to do is, you have to take n of x and in the first step multiply it by x bar n minus k. Okay. So what kind of a multiplication is this? This is quite a trivial multiplication. Right? So all you are doing is shifting all the coefficients of m of x to the left. Okay. So it's, it's quite easy. So you will get here m k minus 1 x power n minus 1 plus round 2 m 1 x power what n minus k plus 1 plus n 0 x power n minus k. Okay, so that's what you get when you do this multiplication by x power n minus k. Okay, so of course this is not an encoding, I am not done any encoding, but this has a nice form. So if I think of this as the code word, okay, so of course it's not the code word, but if I map it to a vector, what do I have? So I am sorry, I have zeros for the first n minus k positions and then I have m0, m1 to mk minus 1. Okay. So, so I have a vector where the message appears by itself. So this is this is nice, the message appears by itself. But now all I have to do is to compute some n minus k bits and put it in the first position so that this whole thing becomes a multiple of g of x. And if I do that, I am done. Okay, so I have found the systematic encoding method. So what do you have to do to make x bar n minus k m of x a multiple of g of x? It may not be a multiple directly, but how do I get to some multiple if it's not a multiple? The first step is to divide by g of x. Okay, so that's that's what we do. So you divide x bar n minus k m of x by g of x. Remember g of x is degree equal to n minus k. Okay, so that's very important. So what will you get if you do that? some quotient times g of x plus a reminder. Okay, what do you know about the degree here? Strictly less than n minus k or less than or equal to n minus k minus 1. Right? Okay, so this quotient I don't really care about, some quotient times g of x. Now we have r of x here which has how many bits? n minus k bits. Okay. Now, if I move this k to this side, what happens? I get a multiple of g of x. Okay. So, when I move r of x to this side, what am I doing? I am doing x bar n minus k m of x plus r of x. But what are the first n minus k coefficients of x bar n minus k m of x? They are all 0. So, r of x will definitely occupy these first positions. Okay. So, you, instead of these zeros, you put r of x here. Okay. When you put R of X here, what do you get? What are you guaranteed to get? You are guaranteed to get a multiple of G of X. Okay. And that gives you the encoder. Okay. So you divide X bar N minus K M of X by G of X. You will get a quotient which you do not care about. You will get a reminder which you care very much about. You take that reminder and put it in the first N minus K positions. You will get finally a code word which will be a multiple of G of X.
Okay, so that's and that's systematic, right? So when you go from MFX to this multiple of GFX, it is systematic. The message appears by itself there. Okay, and how do I know that there won't be any repetitions? How do I know that two MFX will not give me the same code word polynomial in this procedure? Yeah, where MFX appears by itself there. So if MFX is different, clearly the two code words will also be different, and they're all multiples of G. So it's a very trivial way to ensure that no, no very nothing very bad will happen. Okay, all right. So this is the systematic encoding procedure. For BCH codes, the binary BCH code and works very well. So you may wonder how to divide by GFX. I don't know if you've seen this uh, linear feedback shift to just a circuit. So it's, it's very trivial to achieve uh, at least the flops division. So basically, the basic idea is to repeat the your long division method. Right? So you put a polynomial inside, you put the quotient here, you find each thing. So you can put that with a D, implement it with a D flip flop, D flip flop uh, shift register without any problem. Okay? So it's very easy to do that. So once you do that, this division is done. All right. Any questions? Okay, so so that, that's how you do this. Okay, so that's the encoder part of it. And the final thing I want to talk about is the generator matrix. Okay, before we move on. Okay, so how do we have? A, how, would, how did we define a binary DC code? We defined using using a so suppose let's say n k b equals two t plus one binary BC is code. We defined using a two t cross n parity check matrix over what over some g of two par n, right? So some extension c. We had a 2t cross n parity check matrix, okay? And we know a method to go from here to an mt cross n binary parity check matrix. How will you do that? How will you go from here to that? How? Replace each element by its m bit column equivalent. But how did I get to mt, not 2mt? Yeah, do all the even. Get rid of all the even. So you have to only do it for the odd powered ones. Maybe depending on n, even the odd powered ones may, may not be needed. But we know m t cross n is possible. Okay, so we can get that. Right. So it would be nice to get to a generator matrix which is k cross n, for instance. Suppose you want a k cross n generator matrix, binary generator matrix. How do you do that? Okay, so it's quite easy. We've already seen it, but I want to emphasize that once again. It's also possible to get a k cross n generator matrix. Any ideas on how I can do it? Binary, okay? How can I do that? Any ideas? You've already seen it. The answer is already there in our discussions. Oh, I will be more specific, okay? So IP and all is general, fine. But for the binary BCH code, how do I come up with the generator matrix? M, K, D, everything is given. So how do I do that? What is the critical thing that is needed? What do I use to get a generator matrix? The word itself is should be a clue. You have to use the generator polynomial, right? So see, that's that's what gives you. So how do I see? Remember, what is the generator matrix? Just giving you a set of linearly independent code words, right? I have one code word already. What is my first code word that I have? GFX, right? So GFX is a code word or not? And every multiple of GFX is a code word. So you take GFX itself, convert it into a vector, you get a code word. Okay, that's my first and simplest code word I can generate. Okay, remember that. Okay, so that's very important to remember. Okay, so GFX, which is let's say G0 plus G1x plus so on till Gn minus k, x bar n minus k. Remember this will not be zero. Okay, so the G will be equal to x bar n minus k. So the last term will not be zero. You do one for instance. So you can just put the x bar n minus k. And I know from here. From here I know, so that is twice, what do I know, G0, G1, Gn minus K, 0, 0, 0, so on, is a code word. Okay, so this is a point that's quite, quite important and you should remember that, it's, it's quite obvious. All, all code words are all multiples of GFX, you might know that by heart, but if I ask you to quickly produce a code word, you should not be struggling. Okay, so just compute GFX, go to a code word, that's a code word. In most cases, the minimum weight of this might be equal to D. Okay. 
right? Not minimum, but the weight of this might be equal to D. So which means what? Which means what have you shown? If for instance I compute this and I see that the weight of this is equal to D, then minimum distance of the binary BCH code is equal to D. Okay, so that's a quick way of checking that. If, if the minimum distance here is not, minimum weight here is not equal to D, you may not be able to say much, but it will give you some clues as to maybe how I can combine these things. Okay? Alright? So now, how do I quickly produce other code words? Okay, so like, can you give me an idea what is the easiest next code word I can think of? Okay, of course there are all kinds of multiples of GFX. Which multiples are easy? Yeah, shifting is the easiest multiple. Right? So you multiply it with 1, it's easy. Next thing you multiply by x. Okay? Or x squared. Or x power 3. So any multiples of x is very easy because you're just doing shifting. Is that clear? Okay, so that's an important uh, notion to keep in mind. Okay? So, so all you can do is, so what, what you can quickly do is to come up with one code word and then other code words, so other code words can be easily found by shifting. Okay, of course, if you want to go beyond shifting, what should you do? You should XOR some columns. Okay? So, but shifting is a, is a, is a good way to start. Okay. Remember, g n minus k is actually equal to 1. Okay. So, I want you to remember that g n minus k is equal to 1, where the degree is equal to n minus k. So, what happens when I shift one code word after the other and put them in a row? I would get g0, g1, all the way to g n minus k, which I am going to write as 1 per. Okay, how many zeros will I have here? Let me see. k minus 1, right? Am I right? We'll have k minus 1 zeros. Right? So we have n minus k plus 1 here. So when I shift, what happens? I'll get a 1 here. I shift by 1 there, I'll get a 1 here and so on, right? So how many times do I have to shift before I get a 1 here? k minus 1. So along with the first one, you'll have how many rows here? Okay, right? So every row of this matrix is a code word of my binary BCH code. Okay, and how do I know that no two rows are linearly dependent? Look at the right hand structure. You have one, 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 one along the diagonal, right? Along that that part. So no way any two vectors here are linearly dependent. Okay, so this is a generator matrix which is k cross n, which you can easily connect. Okay, so this is a generator matrix. It's also binary. Okay. Is that clear? Any questions? What is the question? I'm sorry? Yeah, it's not in systematic form, but you can convert it to systematic form. How do you convert it to systematic form? You can do Gaussian elimination and convert it to systematic form. That's one answer. But if you want want the systematic generator, then the systematic encoding procedure to work here, it's a little bit more complicated. It does not go there. Okay, so you can convert this to systematic form by Gaussian elimination. If you want it, that's okay. But this is a valid generator matrix. Okay, there's nothing wrong with it. Its row space is equal to your code. No problem. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go for another ten more minutes today. We're going to have to go anywhere today. So is that clear? Okay, so so one way one one thing that this will help you is if you have to sometimes show in a quiz, for instance, that the minimum distance is exactly equal to five or seven or something, then this will help you. Okay, so you can quickly try to find some code word of weight five or weight seven. This method will usually help. You. Okay, so in small numbers you can do it. Small n, small k. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and move on to discussing your uh, quiz papers and returning your answer sheets. Okay, so before I return, let me discuss. Let me discuss the answers. I think most people have done okay. It's not. Uh, it's not proven to be a very difficult uh, exam, except for the last question. I think last question, enough people have made uh, mistakes. So maybe I should point out. Okay. So the first question was very easy. It was about coming up with the table for GF16. I think everybody got it right. So everybody got six marks here. So so it's a DC shift of six, right? So everybody got six marks. Nobody missed out on this. 
The second question, I saw all kinds of statements which I wanted to clarify about pretty carefully. Okay? So I said here, I have an NKB code over GF16. So this is very, very important. Okay? So when I say over GF16, you cannot assume that the code words are only binary. Okay? A lot of people have made that assumption, in, in, at least in the reasoning that, that, that thing is there. So you cannot assume the code words are binary. Okay? So for instance, if I will check my three to you, 1, 1. Alpha, 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 so quite a few, I think there are only 18, 17 people in total, so at least like 3 or 4 people made this claim, which is a large percentage. The second row is linearly dependent on the first row, so the rank is only 1 for H and N minus K is equal to 1 and K is equal to 5. Okay, so what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that uh, conclusion that K is equal to 5? Okay, the second row is not linearly independent of the first, dependent on the first row. Okay, right? So why is that true? You, you can you can check it. How do you check for sure that the second row is not linearly dependent on the first row? We do Gaussian elimination and show that there is a non-zero term in the first one followed by a zero in the second one. There is no way you can quickly compute. There are so many other ways of showing that here. It's not very hard, but that is the definite way of doing it. Okay? And you have to do that. Okay? So if you don't, particularly in a case like this, if you just say the two rows are obviously linearly independent, looking at this, it's not obviously linearly independent. If there is a one there and a zero here, then I agree, it's obviously linearly independent. But if there's nothing like that, it's not obvious. Definitely not obvious. I can I can show you some interesting counter examples, but here it's, it's quite easy. But there are some more complex cases where the only place where you can say obviously linearly independent is if there is a non-zero term followed by a zero term. Okay, so otherwise it's not obvious. Okay, so you can do a quick version elimination to check that these two are linearly independent. Okay. And so that will tell you n minus k is 2, and from there you can conclude k is 4. Okay. Okay, so in the grading, I will expect some reasoning for linearly independent. Okay, so you can't just say claim linearly independent. So there is a way to check for it. So you have to do this in elimination. You can quickly make this 0, right? So you just simply add the two rows, this becomes 0. Here you will get something else, and that shows that they are linearly independent. Okay, that is the first part. And for the minimum distance, what is the definition? The minimum number of linearly dependent columns. Okay, so remember again when you are in GX16, linear dependence is not the same as summing to zero. Is that clear? Okay. So so in the binary case, we can say that definition is equivalent to minimum number of columns that add to zero. We can say that in the binary case. In the GX16 case, you cannot say that. Okay, so in this case it turns out both of them are the same, okay? but it may not in the general case, particularly when I say the code is over GF16, you cannot make that assumption. You cannot say the minimum distance is the minimum number of columns that add to 0, that is not correct, that are linearly dependent, that is the correct statement. Okay? Is it clear? Okay, so think about that, that is a very subtle difference there, it is very important to remember. Okay? So, so if you do that, Okay, so you have to rule out b equals 1. Okay, no one column is all 0. So b equals 1 can be easily ruled out. Okay, and you have to rule out b equals 2. Okay, so there is some proving needed there. Okay, you have to show that no two columns here are linearly dependent. Okay, so I think I don't think anybody has bothered to even think about it. You just claim that any two columns are linearly independent, but that's not enough. You know, I mean, you have to show that no two columns here are linearly independent. How do, dependent. How do you show that? So any two columns here, one is alpha part out and alpha part 2a, another one is what? Alpha part a, alpha part 2k, right? Am I right? So if this has to be equal to some constant times this, what should happen? Alpha part a should be equal to c times alpha part i, alpha part 2a should be equal to, oh, sorry, alpha part i should be equal to c times alpha part j. 2a should be equal to c times alpha part 2j. Okay? Is that okay? So, so you can quickly manufacture a 
problem here. So what will happen if this is true, then alpha part 2 equals c square times alpha part 2. And if this is also true, then what should happen? c square is equal to c, the only possibilities for c are 0 or 1. And then you rule out that if you multiply any column by 0, you won't get another column. Any column by 1, you will definitely not get another column. From there, you conclude that no two columns can be linearly dependent. Okay, so that's a complete way of giving an answer. Okay, you can't say by inspection. Okay, this is not like an objective type paper where I want to look at the last last answer. Okay, so I need the steps. You have to say simply c is equal to c, c is equal to 1, and that is not possible. Okay, so only then I am I'm convinced that b equals 2 does not work. It's, it's quite important. Okay, so you might say it's not important, but I give, I give some marks for such steps also. Okay, not all the marks, but one or two marks will be for that. Okay, and then finally for b equals 3. Okay, so b equals 3 is very easy in this case. Okay, you can argue that b is has to be less than or equal to 3 by the singleton term, so d equals 3 has to be true. That is one quick way of saying d equals 3 is true. Or you can also quickly find several code words of weight 3. Okay, so people have tried to find binary code words of weight 3, okay, which is also good. It's also easy to find. But non-binary code words are very trivial to find. Okay, so if you just do Gaussian elimination, pick one column, the other two automatically pick themselves. Right? So finding non-binary code words of weight 3 is very trivial. Thing. Okay, so you can quickly find non-binary code words of weight 3. Is that clear? What do I mean by non-binary code words of weight 3? So you do the Gaussian elimination, you will get I here, you will get some other column. You pick this to be non-zero and then you pick the parities to be 1 and 1. So it's a very easy way to come up with it because the singleton bound is exactly satisfied. It's easy to do that. Okay? So that's the, uh, that's the final step. Okay? So once you do that, you have to have B equals 3. Okay? But you cannot claim B equals 3 without proof. Either, either side the singleton bound or produce an explicit code word of weight. Okay? So I think this has, this has confused people a little bit. So spend some time thinking about it. What is the difference between this and uh, the other case? If I say a binary BCH code, okay, what will happen for the binary BCH code by this matrix? What is K? Yeah. Yeah, so if I say, if I say binary BCH code, right, I have to do something else. I have to look at the minimal polynomial of alpha. What is the degree of that? 4. 4, okay, and then I have to do n minus 4, 6 minus 4, which will be 2. I okay, will only get k equals 2 if I do binary BCH code, okay. And the minimum distance will still be 3 only, okay. So it's, it's a different uh, kind of code, right. So think about that. That's, that's something important. So I would suggest that you replace it, replace each element by its 4-bit equivalent and check that the second row, second row produces linearly dependent uh, copies of the first one. So you can see that, that's it's not very hard. Okay, so the third question, I did not really expect uh, such kind of confusion. I think almost all answers were imprecise, except for I think one person. Pretty much everybody gave imprecise answers and I'm not, uh, not given good uh, full marks to everybody in the third question, it is uh, it was a very easy question. Somehow I think people, people, made, uh, people made some very serious mistakes and I was very confused about them. Okay. So let's take an n comma n minus 1, 2 repetition code and uh, even the code. Okay. So the important thing to realize is the parity check matrix is simply all ones. So when you make this table S plus E cap, how many bits are there in your syndrome? Those are just two bits. It's either 0 or 1. And how do you find the E cap corresponding to 0? The least weight error vector that gives you 0, which would be all 0. And what is the least weight error vector which gives you syndrome 1? There are several of them, n of them, but you can't pick all n. Okay? Some people are claiming that all n can be picked. You can pick only one E cap. Okay? So only one of them you have to pick. So let's say I put my 1 in the first position. Okay? And then you apply the standard formula. What is the standard formula for problem to a 1 minus 1 minus p power n for this guy and then minus 1 minus p power n minus 1 times p. Okay, so that's the problem. So you just follow the standard method, you get the answer in like 3 steps. There's nothing nothing more to do here. And I think people are going round and round and there's all kinds of confusion about what it corrects when people are claiming d equals 2, so it cannot connect, uh, correct any error. So of course, you can correct one error vector. Okay, so if you have one bit syndrome, you can correct one non zero error vector. Okay, of course, it doesn't have any error correcting capability. It does not correct all the weight one error. So it doesn't have any error correcting capability, but it corrects one error vector. Okay, so do it, do it that much at least. Okay, so don't say it doesn't correct anything. Okay, and the next one, 
is the n comma one comma n repetition code. So here, if you do the if you do the syndrome method, it's a bit more complicated. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's unnecessarily complicated. But you can go back to the minimum distance description. What is the minimum distance description? You have just two code words, right? So don't make your problem harder by going to a much bigger parity check matrix and look at two power n minus one syndromes. Why do you do all that? You have just two code words. What are the two code words? The all zero code word, the all ones code word. Any vector, what do you do? You just compute the distance between these two. If you're closer to zero, you go to zero. If you're closer to one, you go to one. That's a much better description for the ML decoder. But people gave some syndrome description. I have not started it, but it's certainly not advisable. Okay, so you simply do this directly. Okay. But now, what are the error vectors that can be corrected? Okay, so this requires some careful thought. It's not, it's not so easy. You have to carefully do it. Okay. So, so what are the error vectors that are correctable? Okay. So, so it's best to split it into two cases. If n is odd, it's very easy. Okay. So, if n is odd, weight of e less than or equal to n minus one by two, correctable. Okay. Weight of e greater than n minus one by two is not correctable. Okay. Both these statements are true for n odd. Okay, and you can quickly find the probability of error. Okay, what happens when n is even? N is even is a slightly more complicated case. Okay, so one thing you can definitely conclude is weight of E strictly less than n by two is correctable. Can I conclude the other thing? Weight of G, weight of E greater than or equal to n by two is not correctable. No, I cannot conclude it. Okay. Greater than is okay, but what about equal to? What do you do for equal to? So there is a confusion there, right? So you have to either say I toss a coin and after time I decide, which is fine, which is optimal, or you pick any one. If you pick any one, it's, the computation is a bit more complicated. If you pick any one, your decoder is not symmetric anymore. You can't just happily assume all zero pressure is transmitted. You have to do zero first and then one first. Anyway, you'll get the half. Okay. So the best thing is when you have equality for your analysis, you always flip a coin and choose any one which is Closest. If you do that, the analysis becomes very simple. So the ML decoder will turns will turns out the weight of E equals n by two to be correct half of the errors. Okay, any half you can pick. I mean, so it doesn't matter. So it's, it's up to you, whatever you like. And so weight of E greater than n by two, what does it do? It does not correct. Okay, that is also true. Okay, it will always make an error. So that's the that's the ML decoder. Okay, so when you will write down the expression, probability of block error will be different for odd and different for even. You cannot get one expression for both. I think almost everybody got one expression for both, except for maybe one or two guys. So only those guys got that uh, correct. So I will do some marks here. Okay, so there are various ways of thinking about this. Okay, so 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 let me also give you one more way of thinking about it, which may clarify this thing to what's happening. Okay, so you have two power n minus k subgroups. Okay, right. So each syndrome, you can associate a distinct error vector. Okay, so you keep counting from weight one, weight, uh, weight zero, weight one, weight two, so on. Right? Why am I counting from weight zero, weight one, and all that? That is the lower weight error vector, right? So of course you have some minimum distance problem, you get stuck. But for the repetition code, you have no minimum distance problem, right? So you have to keep on counting. Till you come to minimum distance, right? And choose t. I'm sorry. <coughs> so beyond this, only a fraction can be corrected. Okay. So of course, it also has to be greater than t to the n minus k. Is that right? Is that clear? Okay. So, 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 so think about this very carefully. So you are looking at one and choose one and choose two and choose t. So we're going. So now for the repetition code, minimum distance is n. Okay. So you can come up to n by two, but then before that, after that is fine. But at n by two, you have to take half to make sure that you are equal to two power n minus one. Okay. So so the sum has to be equal to two power n minus one, and only at the minimum distance you can correct for sure. Beyond that, you have to add some things to make it equal to two power n minus one. So it's almost as if you are filling your syndromes with error vectors one after the other and trying to cover as many error vectors as possible. So that you can add up to two power n minus k. That's another way of thinking about this problem. Because minimum distance is important. Beyond that, something else will. Okay. 
All right, so let's stop here for now. I'm going to distribute the uh, answer sheets.